The Barnett campus of historically black Simmons College of Kentucky now anchors the corner of Dixie Highway and Dumanil. Some people still think of that part of Dixie in the California Park Hill neighborhood as 18th Street. Peeling back the layers of history, however, reveals that another African-American institution, but not Simmons, was on that corner well before most of the surrounding houses and stores. In 1880, the Colored Orphans Home moved there, realizing a stubbornly held dream by Louisville's post-Civil War black leaders for a permanent home for orphaned and abandoned children. Three years earlier, a group of African-American pastors joined others of their race to push for an orphanage. Soon, with several prominent white allies chiming in, a colored orphan society was formed. With an organization in place, blacks immediately called for the American Missionary Association to support their project with monies derived from the sale of abandoned school buildings where the AMA had taught freedmen at the end of the Civil War. Unsuccessful in that demand in the short run, the Orphan Society reluctantly leased part of an old Union Army barracks near Second and Oak, and by January 1878 opened what the late U of L Dean Blaine Hudson called the first social welfare institution for blacks in Louisville. The Taylor Barrick site quickly proved inadequate, sparking a search for a permanent location. A larger group of whites, consisting of both former Unionists and Confederates, created a Colored Orphans Aid Association to raise funds. Perhaps moved by the earlier protest, the American Missionary Association contributed $1,600 from the sale of their school buildings. And Louisville attorney Benjamin Bristow, a member of the support group, offered for sale a three and a half acre farm on Dixie Highway, complete with a 10 room house where the orphanage moved in 1880. Unionist Bristow had recently returned from Washington where he had been a strong advocate for reconstruction in President Grant's cabinet, but was now leaving Louisville to form a law practice in New York City. From the beginning, the Colored Orphans Home's governance was biracial. The first board, for instance, had a white chair, treasurer, and corresponding secretary while the vice chair and recording secretary were black. The institution's operation, however, appears to have remained exclusively in African-American hands. The matron who managed the facility was black, and one report list an advisory panel consisting of 31 members drawn from area black churches. In addition, for decades, Reverend E.G. Harris, longtime pastor of Plymouth Congregational Church, served as the hands-on board chair. There were complaints from the start that the old farmhouse wasn't big enough, and by World War I, a report noted that 30 children ages 3 to 15 were sleeping three to a bed in deplorable conditions. Chronic underfunding meant that the home was slow to get electric lights and lacked central heat. Happily, the large site allowed room for a farm where volunteers and orphans alike work side by side to raise food. There's plenty of evidence, especially in those early decades, that the African-American community did all they could to support the home. For instance, black congregations raised one-third of the annual budget in those early days through a bazaar. 
Fifth Street Baptist donated new carpeting on what, at one point. And on another occasion, black children from Upper River Road collected 186 bundles of clothing and $21 in cash. By World War I, a full 40 years after opening there at Dixie and Dumanil, the home's finances grew so dire that the board was forced to turn to the Welfare League, a predecessor of today's United Way for major support. In fact, by 1920, the League provided 82% of the orphanage's $3,800 annual budget. Hard times continued through the decade, though, made worse by a fire and the economic depression that swept the nation. In 1933, the Colored Orphans Home no longer qualified for support from the Welfare League successor, and the death knell finally sounded the next year when an emergency appeal for cash failed. After more than a half century at Dixie Highway in Dumanil, the Orphans Home Board sold its campus to Simmons University. Simmons, a comprehensive black Baptist university founded in 1879 on the southwest corner of 7th and Kentucky, had also been the victim of the Great Depression as well as the racial politics of the 1920s. To gain black support for its 1925 bond referendum, the all-white University of Louisville agreed to create an undergraduate public college for blacks. After some years passed, U of L purchased the Simmons campus, opening its Louisville Municipal College for Negroes there in 1931, but allowing Simmons to retain one building if it agreed just to train church workers. Four years later, Simmons sold that remaining property U of L and purchased the old colored orphans home. Combining money from U of L with funds raised by a capital campaign led by local white cigarette manufacturer Wood F. Axton. Now, Axton died just as plans for making the move to Dixie Highway were being finalized, leaving Simmons $10,000 and one sixteenth of his tobacco company stock. Encouraged by its improved financial position, Simmons University opened in the old orphanage building in 1936, and two years later announced plans to construct a new building honoring Axton. When Axton Hall finally opened in 1950, news reports indicated that the old farmhouse used by the orphans would become a Simmons dormitory, and the ancient structure likely survived another decade until Axton was expanded. In 2007, under the leadership of Dr. Kevin Cosby, pastor of St. Stephen Baptist Church, Simmons returned to its original campus at 7th in Kentucky and just recently, following a substantial renovation, the college named its Dixie and Dumanil campus after the late Cecil Barney Barnett, a beloved board chair. Oh, incidentally, UofL closed the Louisville Municipal College in 1951 when its white campuses were racially integrated. So today, it's hats off to the vision of Louisville's African-American leaders and their white allies, who in the aftermath of the Civil War, sailed against harsh headwinds of racism and marginalization to convert an old Dixie Highway farmhouse into a struggling but visionary Jim Crow era orphanage for black children and then when that service became untenable, the site became a center for black higher education that flourishes there even to this day. Well, thanks for watching. I'm pedaling off now in search of the next installment of Hometown Louisville with Tom Owen.